Hi, my name is Alexandra and today I'm going to be talking about educating people on the past of Northern Ireland. So obviously Northern Ireland has had a very difficult past to describe. Part of the reason why we can't move on from what happened is because a lot of people still can't agree on what happened. A lot of times false information is given about scenarios that happened or people aren't really educated on what truly went down on certain events and certain days. Certain figures can be misunderstood or misrepresented and that is part of the reason why there is hard time. People have a hard time trying to be educated on what happened in Northern Ireland. So in my own personal experience, I was raised by my mum who didn't particularly take to do with the history of Northern Ireland. She didn't really talk to me about it when I was younger growing up and she wasn't. she didn't raise me to be involved with any particular side. I was raised relatively neutrally um, and from the ages of 9 to 16 I went to an integrated school. So this actually had a big impact on my childhood because I didn't grow up culturally in one side. Um, I grew up religiously in one side, one side being either Catholic or Protestant. I grew up within a church but I didn't, I wasn't raised to know that culture that came along with that side. So this, the impact this had on me was that I didn't really have a strong connection to Northern Ireland because I didn't really feel the culture as some of my friends did. And I have friends who celebrate their culture on both sides and they are really, they're really confident and happy they grew up that way. But there are definitely advantages to the way that I was raised. One of the advantages of being raised in a very neutral stance was the fact that I didn't grow up hating one side. One of my friends was raised by a parent who disliked one side and she was raised to dislike them as well. It wasn't until she became more self-aware and more able to make decisions for herself that she realised that this wasn't right and that she had to break free from that way of thinking. I was lucky because I was never born with the burden of disliking a certain group of people just because who they were before I even understood really what was going on. As well with being raised neutrally, I wasn't raised with information which maybe wasn't actually true. Some people believe that things are facts and hand them down to people when really there's no factual information behind these things. I wasn't raised that way. I was raised with very little knowledge of what actually happened in the Troubles. Another advantage of being raised neutrally was the fact that it allowed me to grow up and make my own cultural decisions. Being, in, bo being born in Northern Ireland, I have had the opportunity to choose to be British, Irish, Northern Irish or a combination of the three. On my census form, I pressed all three because I believe that I have got roots in each three. This is because um, of the fact that when I turned around 13 or 14, I did start to become curious about my own country's culture and my own country's history. And so I began to educate myself on what happened and I wanted to learn culture, about Irish culture, and I wanted to learn more about British culture. And I think that I did have a difficult relationship with choosing a side in terms of British or Irish. So I'm glad that I came to the conclusion to not pick and to enjoy bits from all sides of it. Another thing with being raised neutrally is the fact that I can get along with any kind of person because I haven't been raised to dislike them and because I haven't been raised in a way that makes other people maybe uncomfortable with who they are. I haven't been raised to create conflict with others, which I'm very grateful for. There's different ways in which you can become educated by other people around you. I think it's really important that people in Northern Ireland, especially the younger generations, become aware about other cultures within Northern Ireland, not just Catholics and Protestants. I think it's really important that we can understand the people living in our society and create strong relationships with them so that they become, they feel as if they belong in our community and they don't feel excluded from our community. As well as learning about other cultures and identities, it's important that we learn about the other side. So if you're a Catholic, learning about Protestant culture and if you're a Protestant, learning about Catholic culture. There's different ways in which you can become educated on not just Catholic and Protestant, but also other minority groups in Northern Ireland. One of these ways is by finding information online. 
Now, as some sources can be biased, so it's important that you look at different sources when finding information on certain topics or events. But the internet is a great tool for finding information on the history of Northern Ireland, the Troubles and the current political state, especially with the confusions regarding Brexit and the Irish border. It's really important that we people make effort to learn about current affairs rather than just consistently living in the past and what did happen. Living in the past and focusing on events that have gone before us can affect the way we vote and can affect the way we make decisions. And I think it's important to take in a current climate when learning about things that happened in the past as well. This is important because it allows you to see and think back to what happened that what happened in the past and the current effect it has. If we forget what we did in the past and don't realise the effects that it had on our current future, then we'll be more likely to make bad decisions in the present, which would lead to bad effects for our future generations. There's great sources online in terms of YouTube videos and um, Instagram infographics, as well as many TikToks. I find quite a lot of information regarding Irish history on TikTok. Now, you have to fact check them to make sure that what they're saying is true, but it's a great way of finding information and connecting with your culture. Another way of learning about the history of Northern Ireland is through chatting to people who you maybe don't have that much connection with. So if somebody you maybe has a completely different cultural identity to you, it'd be a lovely idea to just chat to them in a very respectful and mutual way about both your cultures and the differences between them. Now, please, if you do this, make sure that you do it in a way that they feel comfortable with. It's not appropriate to just walk up to somebody you barely knew and chat to them about their upbringing because you don't know what kind of things you're maybe going to bring up for them that may make them feel uncomfortable or sad. So it's important that it's somebody who knows you and who knows you mean well. And it could be important as well to chat to them at the start and say, hey, I maybe want to learn a wee bit more about your culture. Would you mind chatting to me about it? This ensures that they're in a mental state where they can chat to you about it without becoming too overwhelmed or exhausted because cultural identities are a very big topic. I think it's important to learn about other cultures and other sides of the Northern Irish coin because it allows us to create a more diverse society and a more understanding society. If we grew up completely unaware of what the other side believe and what their cultures are, then we have far more chance of creating an unfair or unsafe and hostile environment. The more we understand things about the other side, the more we'll begin to believe that we're all just one community practicing different beliefs and taking part in different activities. I've gone to integrated school from I was nine and I went there right up to the age of 16. This really impacted the way in which I viewed the world because in primary school, my primary school was a very mix of school. And although Catholics and Protestants were separated for religious education, we were mixed in every other aspect. And so we were encouraged to enjoy in each other's cultures and we were encouraged to accept one another and love one another. I knew growing up there was Protestants who played things like Gaelic football and handball. So this was quite good because it meant that Protestants weren't then were then ex Protestants were in fact experiencing parts of Irish culture and if you enjoy a part of Irish culture then you're far less likely to grow up disliking Irish culture because you enjoyed that part of it. I think it's important to teach people from a very young age about uh, Catholics and Protestants and having the divisions between them and I think it's important that people are educated on why. Growing up in an integrated secondary school I did not get to learn about the troubles I learnt about the partition in Ireland but I did not get to learn about how Northern Ireland's future went and what happened to Northern Ireland after, after the partition. This really upset me because it was something I was really looking forward to learning and it was something I always sort of counted down to so I was really upset when I found out I wasn't going to learn about it. I think the reason why we were told we weren't going to learn about it was because of the fact that our school was integrated and it's quite a controversial topic. As I said at the beginning of this speech, we still can't agree on what really happened in the past in Northern Ireland, so it's very difficult to come to a conclusion about what happened when teaching it. Sometimes schools just believe it's better to steer clear of what happened in order to avoid offending anybody or teaching false information. 
there was genuine, it genuinely came from the heart when they made that decision. They weren't making it deliberately out of badness. It was just easier than offending somebody or teaching something wrong. And I do believe that if you don't feel as if you have enough information to teach somebody something correctly, you shouldn't teach somebody it. So yes, not learning about the troubles in school. I don't have a great deal of knowledge about my own culture and my or my own country's history. And that's because, as I said at the start, a lot of sources can be biased. So it becomes very difficult to look into history for Northern Ireland because you're constantly trying to see things from both perspectives and you're trying to make sure the information you're receiving is in fact true. The difficulty with educating yourself about Northern Ireland is learning false information and then spreading false information. I've been given information by, fr by friends about what happened in the past in Northern Ireland and when I looked it up it wasn't true but it's something that they had been taught by their parents and had believed their whole lives. Personally, I think that this is quite damaging to a Northern Irish society because false ideas about what happened in the past and about the other side can create a more divided society. Currently, especially in this climate to do with Brexit and the Irish border, we need to break down barriers and open up communication between the two sides. Something else that I really wanted to focus on is how we educate people and is it morally right to educate children on the past? So growing up, as I've said, I had no real education on what happened in the past in Northern Ireland, but I did know that it was very big and that there was a war. I, is it morally right to teach children about the past of their own country if that past is a dangerous one? And is it morally right to teach them it if that past could possibly be reopened? I know a lot of people in Northern Ireland fear uh, the Troubles Part 2 and we worry that something will happen which will re-spark it and that we'll go back into the Troubles again. Teaching children this fact could worry them and cause them to panic. It could break this sense of security that children desperately need to establish good mental health at a young age. But also we do need to focus on educating children on loving the, wor the world around them. I believe that it is important to teach children their history and it is very important to teach them what happened in the past, but I think we need to be careful at what age we're doing this and how it's being done. In primary school, we experienced lots of shared education trips, and I think that these are really good at a later age. I think that it's so important to mix people, especially people who go to a single stream school, such as Catholic schools or Protestant schools. I think that mixing the different schools long term can be a good way of creating bonds between the two communities. Personally, when I was in secondary school, I only got to experience shared education once. This made no difference, in my opinion, between Catholics and Protestants. They mixed the local integrated school, the local Catholic school and the local Protestant school together. But because we only did it once, we didn't get an opportunity to talk to people from different schools about their cultural experiences and their backgrounds. So it made no difference to the Troubles or to our opinions about what happened in the past of Northern Ireland. I think that if shared education is to be carried out, it has to be a group of children that will be working together long term in order to establish proper bonds and proper relationships. In primary school, we, we weren't taught by our teachers about what a Catholic or a Protestant was. So when we mixed with the local school, we didn't understand why they were different than us. and We didn't understand how. So when people told us that we were mixing because we were different, we were just really confused and it didn't make any difference to us the fact that they were Catholic or Protestant. It just mattered that they were a different school and because we all already had our own friends and our own school we did not want to mix with them even though they tried to make us. They paid lots of money, I assume they got a grant to take us to this wee place out somewhere and it was a, like a really long bus journey and then it was a really fun day but we, I don't remember talking to anybody from the other school at all. I remember just sticking with my own friends. I think that's because we were too young to truly understand why we were doing it. I think it was just for us mixing with a different school. Perhaps shared education is something that needs to be taking place at a different stage than early primary school years. I think that it's really important children understand the heritage and people understand what happened in the past. But I also think we need to teach them it from at an appropriate age. I think children are quite young when we start shared education in my experience. I remember we mixed with another school, I think it was P2 or P3, but and then we started to mix properly in P4. 
that's just very young and far too young to understand what actually happened in later primary school years or potentially early secondary school years I think it's a great time to start educating children about what happened but I think it's important that they're educated in a way that means that they don't dislike with the other side and that it's not done in a biased way that makes for example if it was a single stream school if it, they don't want to do if it was a single stream catholic school we don't want it taught saying that Catholics were amazing and Protestants were bad in the same way that if it was a Protestant school, we don't want it to be taught in a way that it, Protestants were great and Catholics were bad. We don't want to be taught in a very biased way, depending on who the audience is. I think that it's important that Northern Irish history is taught at a very develop, and in an early development stage in a non-biased way, with the outcome being that everyone in Northern Ireland treats each other with respect and kindness, regardless of their community, whether it be Catholic or Protestant or an ethnic minority. I think it's important that we as a society in the future of Northern Ireland can come together and create a well-rounded and diverse place where we all feel as if we're accepted and loved by people and where people don't hate each other simply based on what type of sport they play, what language they speak, what cultural identity they have, their passport or what church they've grown up in. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.